I'd like to thank Anima for sponsoring today's video. So in short, what is Anima? Well, it allows you to translate your designs into code, which is quite amazing. So let's actually take a look at their website. I'm on animaapp.com. And in short, you can utilize multiple different design software. So Adobe XD, Figma, Sketch, whichever one that you prefer. And you can collaborate in real time. Saves you time as well, especially if you're a developer. And then also you can see here down below, they have again, the design softwares and also the coding languages that you can actually convert your designs into. So let's actually hop over to Figma, which I'm gonna be using for this video. And I'll show you guys exactly how it works. So the first thing you're going to need is an Anima account. So I'll include a link in the description below. So go ahead and just click on that link, sign up for an account. And then next thing you're gonna need to do is navigate over to your preferred software of choice. And the one I'm gonna be using is Figma. So if you have XD or Sketch, feel free to utilize this. But for tutorial's sake, if you wanna follow exactly what I'm doing, then I would advise you to utilize Figma. And if not, then you can find other resources as well on how to use the other softwares. But once you are on Figma, you'll most likely have to create some sort of design if you don't have one already. But here I went ahead and created my simple website layout. And as you can see, we have desktop, tablet, and mobile view. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do is actually make sure you have the Anima plugin. So if you don't know how to do this for Figma, you go over here, click on this main menu icon, and then you can see this option called plugin. So I already have it installed, but if you don't, simply click on this manage plugins option right here. And then you can go into browse plugins in the community. So I just click on this really quick. And then you can just search up here in Anima. So I just type it in. And then I'll search it up. And then boom, you have it right there. And go ahead and click install. And then you're set to go. So I'm gonna navigate back over to my website design. And then we can go ahead and utilize it. Now I'm back on my design. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is set up responsiveness. So first thing I'm gonna do is if you don't have a different size screen, then make sure you create one for this to showcase but at least have one more other than desktop and then you should be able to do the same thing so i have desktop i'm gonna select that select my tablet and i'll select mobile as well and then all i need to do is just right click on anywhere above the highlighted areas and then go down to plugins and click on anima so once you are on this screen if you have never logged in it's going to ask you to log in and authenticate your account so once you do that then you will see a similar screen just like mine. So the first thing you see is this prototype tab. We're gonna focus on this after. First thing I'm gonna target is this responsiveness, okay? So I already have this set up, but let me just go ahead and redo this just for you guys. And basically, first thing is this Figma constraints. If you've never seen this, basically it keeps a constraint to a specific area. So for example, I have this little mobile icon right here, the hamburger menu, and I have a constraint to the top and the right side basically. So if you wanna utilize this in your design, then I'd recommend you click on this option. Now I have to click back on my three sections again cause I unclicked that. So let me highlight them again. And then let's click on breakpoints. I'm just gonna click on the plus sign here and then it shows the selected frames. And again, if you have a larger screen size then obviously you'll have to create a larger design. Smaller then you'll have to recreate a custom design too. But for this purpose, we only have three. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and then I'm gonna go ahead and preview this in the browser. So here is a little preview showing us what our design currently looks like. This is the desktop version, as you can see, looks exactly like what I have on my Figma file. And then we can click on this section right here. And as you can see, we got the little tablet action right here. And then we can go to the mobile display. And if I were to scroll back to the top, you can see it looks exactly how we have it designed. And let's go X off this really quick. And next thing I wanna show you is how to add some cool effects. All right, so let's say for example, you just wanna add some cool little animation. So let's just start off with the most basic thing. And I like to do this in most of my products too, is add a little effect to the button. So all you do, right click the button, go to plugins, anima, and then once it loads up, I'll show you guys. So here's a prototype. Now we have multiple options, but for the most parts, hover effects for buttons typically are the most simple. Obviously you wanna do more complex things and you have to add some custom code, but here you can see it actually shows you exactly what you just clicked on, which might get started button here. And this is the current effect. We have ease with a duration of 0.2. And this is basic CSS. If you guys wanna increase this, you can, but for just example's sake, let's just hit save really quick. And then let's preview this in the browser and see exactly what happens. So show me my submits. Let me just switch back to my desktop. And now once it loads up, I just added a little animation of this thing and you can see 
it grows and hover over it and it only affects the button that we just touched on which is the get started this one up here does nothing to it so if you want to add effects to that then you have to go into that button and then customize it there and now i want to add another animation so let's go to my little image over here and i have it aligned with the left so it's on the center but again design you can tweak that but let's go here to the animal plugin again and then I want to go to an entrance animation. And for this one, I, I think a fade in looks pretty good. And for exaggeration's sake, I'm gonna set this to one second just to show you so you can see it much easier. And then this is basically the CSS on how it works. So I hit save, preview in the browser. And then let me switch back over to my desktop really quick. And as you can see, once it shows, we can go like there. You can see it looks like that. So let me actually refresh the page because it might have been a little difficult. And there you go, you can see that little fade animation in. And that is how you add it there. And also we have our still, our button hover effect there. And let me just click on something else. And let's just right click, go to plugins, animal plugin. And let's just look at some other things they have here. So we have the media gifts. That's if you wanna add a pretty much YouTube, Vimeo, external type video, or you can upload your own file. You can embed code and text input. So this is actually cool right here. So let me show you this. Let's go to my little text input right here. And I, you actually have to have to click on the actual text, which I have here. And I made the box this length because it allows you to type to the length of the box. So if you click on text input now, click on edit, you can choose what type of uh, thing you want. So I have actually set to email. And then you can have a placeholder here. I just have whatever I have typed already. You can set it required if you want to, but I mean, this newsletter is not necessarily. And I'll just hit save here. Preview in the browser. And then let me switch back to desktop really quick. And then when we scroll down, we can see it's right here. And I already have, I think, pre-defaulted stuff I typed in, so it might show up. But like, for example, I just type in a bunch of letters here. And as you can see, the length of what I put for the actual uh, text box, it will go all the way out to the end. So in terms of design purposes, it stops right here. So if you were to go back on my design, you can see it looks exactly like that. So if you wanna put like email at email.com and then boom. And now let's actually show you this cool thing too, how to have it change to a different page. So you can see, I noticed you have this like uh, extra page down here if you're probably wondering. It's just a little uh, navigation page so that I can show you for example purposes, but click on another button if you have some sort of like sign up or submit type button. Go to plugins again, Anima app, and then we can go to the option underneath it, the submit button. And then here, this is where you would enter your email. So I already have something pre filled out, but basically if you want to get some sort of a form or receive the responses, this is where you type your actual email that you want. You can have the spreadsheet too if you'd like that. And then on, on uh, success, what page do you want it to go? So here I have this actually named the word submit. So you can see these are all the options I have my current design on the left of the screen. And I want this to go to my submit page, just navigates them to it. And then if it doesn't, I just wanted to stay on the same page, which is my desktop. So I hit save here, preview in the browser. And let me just switch back. And then when I go down below and just click on it, let me go ahead Let's go here, let it load a little bit, and let me refresh real quick, cause my, there, okay, we're good. So I'll just put, um, let's just click on this thing, and I'll just sign up, and now you can see it actually navigates us to the page I sent, which was my submit page, and that's little, like, a uh, little friendly doggy right here. All right, so now, that is basics of how to set it up, add some little animations, responsiveness. But now you're probably wondering, how do we get this into code? So let's go ahead and actually click on this option, get code here. Now you can choose different framework, HTML, React, View. For this, I'm gonna start with HTML. And then obviously if you want to see the other types, feel free to do that. And I'll just click on here. Now, next thing you need to do is select or create a project. So I'm actually going to just click on this right here and then just name the project. Let's call this like, oof, websites right there, and then your workspace, your team, and I'll just click on create project here. And now everything you need to do is sync and get the code. So while that finishes up, we can wait, and then we'll be able to see how to access the code from there. And now the code is ready, so let's go ahead and just click on open code mode. And now we have three different options. So the first one is the zip file, and this is basically if you want to upload this web hosting, Easy, if you aren't a developer, then you can just upload the file and you're good to go. But we're actually gonna do that too since uh, we're gonna open this on our own code editor. You have the inspect code option if you wanna just inspect the code and see it currently on the browser. 
Also have the code sandbox, so depending on which one you choose, this can open like a code pen on there on your browser, and that way you can just write a go ahead and just edit the code through the browser. And then we can choose between the different uh, frameworks. So I'm just gonna stick with the HTML. If you wanna go React, feel free, or view, but I'm gonna go with HTML, click on the zip file, and let's just go ahead and click on export. All right, so here we are in VS Code. I went ahead and opened up the file, and I have it open with Live Server on the right side. So as you can see, this is currently what our website looks exactly like our design. And then we're gonna switch to tablet mode. Let me just drag it out here. And then obviously it's specific to the breakpoints that I have and also we have desktop. So now let's shrink it back down and let's just show you. And currently one thing to note that if you do not like the way the names are generated for the classes, then you can just go in here and change them up. But do know this is auto-generated based off your design. So it has a specific method. But again, if you want to change this to whatever class you want to, feel free to do that. And for example, we can go here to let's go like the stock guy, for example. And again, I didn't write a single line of this code. This was all generated through Anima. And if I want to just change this, let's just change this root value of black. Let's just color it so I can show you visibly. We can just hit here, change it to red, and I'll just save. And now you can see it actually changes the CSS of the website in real time to the color with the code. So as you can see, let me just uh, reverse this really quick. This is a simple way to get your designs turned into code in real time. And then you can go ahead and tweak and edit the fonts, the file structure, the naming and all that stuff afterwards. But again, guys, if you are interested in checking this out, I'll include a link down below in the description of this video. So if you click on that link, it leads you to Anima. And then you can go ahead and test it out for yourself. So do let me know your thoughts if you've used Anima before. And aside from that, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.